We might have to do one at a time. Do you want me to do one at a time? Hey folks, I'm sorry. We look like we may be experiencing technical difficulty again today. Uh, looks like maybe my hotspot is working now. If I could get some thumbs up or comments, that would help us know um, if this is working for you, if you can hear us. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. You are here today with me. My name is Carrie. I'm the Curator of Education here, and I'm here with one of our amazing educators, Sarah. Yay! Okay, the hotspot started working. Um, so as you can see, if you've been following us or been to the zoo before, you will know that we are in our animal encounter space. Um, so this is a place where we bring out our animal ambassadors to meet everybody, and today is no different. We're going to be meeting with two of our animal ambassadors, with Sarah, um, who is going to talk about a very interesting topic. So I'm going to come down here and turn it over to Sarah. Hello everyone. So today we're going to be doing a bit of an interesting chat. We're going to talk about one of the best questions I get when we meet our reptile animal ambassadors, which is what is the difference between a turtle and a tortoise? So right now you're looking at a good friend of mine who, if you've been watching all of our keeper chats, you've already met. This is Tilly and she has an eastern box turtle. In just a minute we're also going to be meeting Dottie, who is our red-footed tortoise, and they're going to be helping me demonstrate some of the main differences between turtles and tortoises. Now just to get us started, I do have kind of a silly way for you to remember the main difference, which is I want you to look at your hands. Uh, and if you look at your hands, you should see 10 fingers. And of them, two of them are thumbs. So if I tell you that all thumbs are technically fingers, but not all fingers are thumbs, that's a good way to remember that tortoises are technically a kind of turtle, but not all turtles are tortoises. So there are some good main differences that we can keep in mind when we look at them. And since I'm guessing you can probably see them right now, we'll start with the feet. So tortoises are famous for spending most of their time on land, whereas turtles, like Tilly, spend more of their time in the water. Some of them, like sea turtles, spend almost all of their time in the water. So tortoises are gonna have these big, clunky, elephantine feet, which we'll see in a bit on Dottie, that are great for powering over different land features. Whereas turtles, like Tilly, have these great webbed feet, some of them entirely webbed, with claws that are helpful for gripping wet surfaces like pond bottoms, river banks, things like that. So that's going to tell you where they spend most of their time. And that's a huge difference between turtles and tortoises, arguably the biggest difference. So tortoises spend their time on land, turtles can spend some or most of their time in water. There's also a general size idea. Tortoises tend to be much larger than turtles. Now, of course, that's just a rule of thumb. It's not an actual rule. So as it turns out, the biggest turtle in the world is in fact the leatherback sea turtle. So it is a turtle, not a tortoise, but the Galapagos tortoise is famous for being absolutely huge. And that is one of our big land tortoises. Typically, again, turtles tend to be smaller. There are some small tortoise species, but as you can see, Tilly here, who actually turned 17 in February, is still, about the size of my hand. So that's a good way to know too. If you're looking at a very small animal, you're more likely to be just looking at a turtle rather than looking at a tortoise. Let's see if we can keep her distracted with some of her favorite snacks. The diet is something else that's a little bit different. So our turtles tend to be more omnivores. They tend to have a little bit more meat in their diet, whereas tortoises tend to be more herbivores and stick mostly to plants. Again, Dottie tends to be a bit of a strange exception to this. She will eat some meat, and she also likes to eat poop, which is kind of gross, but a pretty good tactic. Which are the larval form of something called a superworm beetle. We don't usually give her the beetles. Those don't seem quite as tasty, but she's a huge fan of those nice worms. So even though she's smaller, she does tend to have a meatier diet. She'll eat things like fish. She can eat things like frog eggs or fish eggs. She's just going to eat basically what she can find. Insects are a good one, though. Worms definitely are a good one. And Dottie's chomping on some grapes right now, one of her favorites, along with lettuce. So much lettuce. So if you're just joining us, we're here with Sarah today, and we are meeting 
Uh, Tilly the box turtle and Dottie the red-footed tortoise. Dottie's on your right and Tilly's on your left. And if you have questions, we are learning all about the differences between turtles and tortoises. Um, feel free to put those in the comments. Otherwise, I'm sure Miss Sarah has lots of information to share with us. I absolutely do. So again, in talking about the ways that they're different, these two turtles have very different places in the world, very different habitats. Turtles around the world can live in basically any habitat. They're kind of amazing. They stay away from super cold places, but they're still pretty, uh, pretty good. You might get to eat her diet. Sorry about that. <laughs> so um, Dottie here is going to be joining us from northeastern South America, typically on like rainforest edges, although they can live in savannas, dry forests, anything like that. Whereas Tilly is from right here in Massachusetts. And so she's going to be living more along, like I said, stream banks, pond banks, river banks, and just those nice kind of wet areas of forest in New England, which is pretty cool. Let's see, what other fun things do we know? We Their shells have, yeah, look really different to me. Are pretty different, which is again another way that Tilly's going to cause some trouble in the differences between turtles and tortoises. Turtles typically have flatter, more streamlined shells, which allow them to move through water faster. Whereas tortoises will have these nice big dome shells that prevent large predators, like with her, jaguars, from getting into them. So you actually, if you found a red-footed tortoise in South America in the wild, you might even find cracks from where a jaguar has tried to crack open their big shell. Now Tilly is a rare exception. She's uh, a dome-shelled tur uh, turtle. And so she's gonna have a bit more of that arch that's not necessarily common in turtle species, but it does keep it interesting. Let's see if Dottie wants her egg today. They bring some more grapes, so hopefully we can keep her distracted. <laughs> I think she really wants a worm. She'd really like that. We may have to borrow a worm. Here, you want the worm? Maybe, maybe just maybe. So again, just remember that tortoises are technically a kind of turtle, but not all turtles are tortoises. And I believe the current number that you'll find if you look it up is that there are 356 different species of turtles. I don't love throwing that number out because there are so many different subspecies, it's really hard to keep track of how many there actually are. Suffice to say there are over 300 different kinds of turtles in the world. I did mention that sea turtles are the ones with those super flippery feet, which is going to distinguish them easily, but not as easily as the fact that they'll spend almost all their time in water. And there are only seven kinds of sea turtles in the world every single one of which is considered endangered. Now Tilly here is technically a species of special concern, which means if you see them in the wild in Massachusetts, please leave them where they are. They're very good at finding their way home as long as they're the ones that got where they are. So if you pick them up and move them, that's gonna be tough. That said, if you see them in the road, do pick them up please, but make sure you move them in the direction that they're already going. <laughs> So I don't know if we've got any questions or you need me to go through my um, never ending supply. Well, you class. answered Logan's question, which is what are they eating? Oh, good question, Logan. They've also got this crazy powder on here. This is basically a vitamin for our reptile. It's called super cal. It's got lots of calcium in it, which is a big thing that turtles need to keep them nice and strong, to keep those shells growing really well. Those shells are not something that they wear around like an outfit. That is actually a modified rib cage. So their ribs are underneath the top part of this carapace, which means that if you see an empty shell, unfortunately that turtle is not walking around naked somewhere. It is no longer with us. So those shells are pretty cool and they're a very important part of the actual bones and skeleton of a turtle. Since Dottie's walking around a little bit, um, I have a question. Yeah. Do, is there a difference in the speed at which a turtle and a tortoise <laughs> walk? Again, there are general rules of thumb, and so you could think about it in terms of where they spend most of their time, that tortoises will move faster on land than turtles, and turtles will move faster in the water. That said, we usually think of tortoises as being slower because they've got that huge, heavy shell that they've got to lug around. Now, Dottie happens to be a very speedy, quick little tortoise, which is not surprising, again, considering she comes from the jungle, and she is going to have to escape a, a fair number of things. Usually adult red-footed tortoises really only have two predators. It'll be again the jaguar, which can actually bite through that shell, and the human. Now unfortunately, these guys are collected for their shells, but also their meat. Some people will eat them, and of course deforestation is taking away some of their habitats. So they do have to worry about that. But other than jaguars and humans, adult red-footed tortoises don't have to worry about too much. The eggs and the babies They've got a lot more to worry about. Birds of prey, snakes, 
crocodilians, and of course jaguars, again, just a slightly easier meal for the jaguar. Our eastern box turtle here has to worry about a lot more, unfortunately. So she's gonna rely on camouflage and hopefully avoid predators, but unfortunately, because she is so small, she is much easier to break into and to get open. So she has to be very good at hiding either under the water or in a nice burrow that she digs for herself. And talking about turtles and tortoises, is there a difference in habitats or parts of the world where you can find one or the other? Well, turtles are restricted usually to places that have water. Now there are sea turtles that live in salt water, there are freshwater turtles, and there are even brackish water turtles, but they do need to be near some sort of water. Tortoises don't have that restriction. You can even find them in deserts where there's almost no water. And in those cases, they'll have to get their water from the things they eat. So the rare plant that they find or a cactus, or even if they're eating some insects that will have water in them. So it's a little bit tougher, but they're very specialized for it. That said, like I was talking about before, those over 300 species of turtles can be found in almost every habitat in the world. So it, unless you're in basically the Arctic, you can probably find some sort of turtle species. Um, Jerry had a question about, can you tell their age by their shells? In theory, you would be able to count the rings on a turtle shell, kind of like a tree. Uh, I wish it were that easy. Unfortunately, it can be pretty tricky. If you get a close up on Dottie's shell there, you can see just how close together those are. And just like with a tree, those rings are gonna be affected by all sorts of different things that they're going through during their life. It's a good food year, a bad food year. They can be scarred by problems that they have. Shells can grow incorrectly if they are malnourished in some way. But yes, technically, you would be able to count these lovely little rings here going up to that top. Ah, she's found her own snack. Yeah, some dandelions. Leave it, leave it to Dottie to find food anywhere she goes. And Tilly's coming to catch up with us. Might take her a little longer though. Her legs are pretty tiny. She makes up for it though. Checking out the water. Stopping to get some water. Oh, that's, that makes sense. She is a turtle. She likes water. She's got those webbed feet. Maybe she could go for a very, very small swim. It's like a kiddie pool. Now, I know this time of year is important, especially around here for things like box turtles. Do you want to talk a little about, a bit about in the spring and how Absolutely. our friends at home might be able to help them? Absolutely. So this is, of course, the season when we'll start seeing baby turtles. Now, one of the reasons that we have Tilly here with us, she was rescued by Massachusetts Fish and Wildlife because she was born in February, which is not a great time for a cold-blooded animal to be born in New England. So they did rescue her and she's been living a lovely spoiled turtle life ever since here with us. But once it gets warmer, that's when the majority of Eastern box turtles are gonna start hatching and they're gonna be wandering around. There is no parental care here, so they're basically on their own, which means if you see one, Really, unless you can tell that something is very wrong, it's best that you leave it. Their homing instincts are excellent, but they only work if they know where they are to begin with. So if you pick one up and take it to show and tell or bring it home to keep as a pet, first of all, that is illegal in the state of Massachusetts, so don't, you know, do that. But also, if you just put them back in your backyard, they will never find their way home and it's gonna be very difficult for them to survive. So we need to just make sure that we're really good neighbors to our friends, the Eastern box turtles. There are a lot of baby turtles out right now. Fun fact, with both the species that we have out today, the red-footed tortoise and the Eastern box turtle, their eggs are actually going to be boys or girls based on what temperature it is when they're hatching. So if you have a really hot year, you're going to have more female turtles. If you have a slightly cooler year, you'll tend to have more males. We like to see that nice average temperature so we get some of each. And it is an interesting to think about when we talk about seasons maybe getting warmer than they're supposed to be, the implications that that has for some of our reptile friends. I wanna thank Beth for her donation today. Your donations <laughs> help us keep our conservation education mission alive during this time, so we really appreciate that. And hello, Kaiden, no worries. Kaiden's joining us a little late today. Hi, if Kaiden. you are just joining us, we are here with Sarah. And we have a turtle and a tortoise and we're learning about the differences between turtles and tortoises. Uh, we had a question from Jessica about why, I'm sorry, from Caroline and Grace. Why do people collect turtle shells? That is such a good question and I'm glad that you don't know the answer to it because that means that it's never occurred to you to want to decorate with a turtle or tortoise shell. So some people think that they look very pretty 
or they'll even make things out of it. And so unfortunately, they will hunt those turtles and tortoises just so that they can empty out those shells and use them for different things. So it's not something that I like to think about, but it is something that happens. So it's important that we make sure that people know not to do that because we do want to protect all of our lovely turtle friends. I think a long time ago before technology and plastics and things like that, people would make things like barrettes and um, beautiful things out of turtle shells. But turtle luckily, shells, actually the name of a pattern, I believe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so luckily people are able to kind of recreate that um, synthetically these days, which is a really nice Absolutely. option if that's something you're interested in. All right. If we have any other questions about the differences between turtles and tortoises or our friends here. We're happy to take those. Um, as many of you may have seen on our Facebook page, we are getting ready to reopen the zoo. Um, this Saturday and Sunday will be open for members only. And then starting next Wednesday, June 3rd, we will be open to the public. Everyone will need a timed ticket to enter. And all of that information, including all of the new um, Guidelines will, are posted on our front page of our website, so definitely be sure to check there for more information about that. We are very excited to be able to see everybody in person very soon. Um, Kathy Ann had a question about who lives longer, turtles or tortoises. I love that question, and I meant to mention that, so thank you so much for reminding me. Now again, our turtle and tortoise are going to make this very confusing because Tilly can live up to 100 years, and even though there's not a lot of research on red-footed tortoises, it's believed they can live between 30 and 50 years if they're very lucky, but that is not usually the case. Tortoises usually live much longer than turtles with an average lifespan anywhere from 60 to over 100 years depending on the species, with some of the oldest animals ever living to actually be kinds of tortoises. Turtles will usually live around 20 to 40 years. So clearly our two girls here are just trying to mess with my rules of thumb, but lucky for us, they both have very long lifespans and we're very early on in them. Again, Dottie is around five, we believe. She was actually rescued, so we don't know her date of birth. But Tilly was born uh, in February of 2003. So she just turned 17. So we've got a nice long way to go with both of our girls. And that is really good information to research. We always talk to people about if you're thinking that maybe a turtle or a tortoise would make a great pet, it's important to know that depending on the species, your grandchildren could be inheriting your turtle or tortoise um, as a, a pet years and years down the line. So it's really important that with any animal, they are a long-term commitment, but these guys particularly are next <laughs> are level. Extra long-term commitment. Yes. <laughs> Dottie is on the move as Dottie always. Is on a mission. Dottie is always very active, this one. I was expecting somebody to ask a question about the word terrapin. Mm. That comes up a lot sometimes because technically there is another category of turtle called a terrapin, but I don't usually see it used in a lot of scientific contexts because there's not a great definition. And in fact, you'll see some people arguing exact opposites. So usually people will argue about that means that they spend more or less time in fresh water. So it's a really tough one to say, but it does just seem interesting to me to mention that terrapin is just the Algonquin word for turtle. Uh, so it's kind of just another way to say it's a turtle. <laughs> that said, you can always count on them to be a little bit smaller and to have those nice webbed and clawed feet, very similar to Tilly. So if you're out and you see like a diamondback terrapin or something like that, it'll look a little bit familiar, but it's not a great scientific distinction. So you won't necessarily see the word terrapin come up too much more than just seeing it in one of these animals names. Uh, we did have a question from Beth. Will they keep growing? That's a great question. So they have sort of reached their adult size. They may continue to grow and we have to be very careful that they don't grow too much in, the, in a horizontal direction, if you know what I mean. We have to make sure they stay on a good diet so they don't get a little overweight. But Tilly is about this, the typical size. For an adult eastern box turtle, she weighs just over a pound, uh, which is about what you would expect. So that's pretty funny to me. She's tiny and adorable. And then Dottie, um, she could get a little bit bigger. Their average size in the wild is a bit over a foot. So she's around that length. And she weighs about 14 pounds, 13.8 pounds. So we're gonna make sure that they stay at a nice healthy weight for their species. But this is about as big as they'll both get. Um, Jerry had a question about, do snapping turtles have to live near water? 
So snapping turtles, again, are going to be the kind of turtles that has that slightly webbed feet with those claws on them. And because they lay their eggs near water, it is important that those babies be able to get there as a source of nourishment, but also just a source in general of being able to stay safe from predators. They're not quite as snappy as babies, <laughs> so they don't have that to rely on as much. It's one of the few species of turtles that actually does have some parental care, so the mothers will take care of them. But yes, I would say, to my knowledge, most snapping turtles have to be pretty close to water just for their offspring to survive. If a mother puts the eggs too far away from water, the odds of those babies making it is, is not as great. Um, Caroline and Grace would like to know, can tortoises go in water and swim? That's a great question. Um, it's kind of a funny thing to imagine, but they're pretty heavy, so they would probably be able to continue walking on the bottom. They wouldn't want to get too deep. They're, they're not super great at, at the swimming part. If you look at their feet, it's not going to be good at moving water. So they could certainly walk in some shallow water, and we do give dotty baths where we get to see that displayed but they're not going to be able to really go for a swim and they won't usually live in places where that's something they would need to do anyway but it would be kind of funny to see them try kaiden was wondering how you spell terrapin <laughs> that's a great question let's see if i can do this out loud without writing it down t-e-r-r-a-p-i-n uh, what is the largest turtle and the largest tortoise the largest turtle is the leatherback sea turtle, which is really, really cool. You should definitely look it up. It does not have the same kind of hard shell that we've been learning about today. So they have an amazing ability to stay afloat, even though they are absolutely massive. They can be up to double the size of the largest tortoise, which is the Galapagos tortoise. Also huge. You can find some really cool pictures of grown adults standing next to them and having those tortoises be even a little bit taller. So those are the two largest and they can get to a couple hundred pounds, which is pretty amazing. Do these guys have a strong bite? Do these two have a strong bite? Um, of all the turtles out there, these probably wouldn't compete for the strongest bites, but they can bite through things that they need to eat. For both of them, that tends to be mostly just fruits and veggies, so they can bite through those. If you look at Dottie trying to eat what I assume is a rock, so let's get that away from her. <laughs> So much food here as an option. And you're going to go for the rock. Okay. How about the lettuce? Or the egg? Or any of those? Nope, more rocks. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's not uncommon for red-footed tortoises to eat sand and rocks. It helps with digestion, so it's not a bad thing to see her do, but I would like to see her eat the more, you know, nutritious options available. So anyway, I mean, if that shows you, their bite's not strong enough to break a rock, and it probably wouldn't be strong enough to really hurt me, for instance, if they bit me. But I'm going to bring Dottie over here and show you her mouth. And you'll see that it has almost a beak-like shape. So it is good at slicing and chomping through things like if I gave her some fish or some fruits or vegetables that had skins on them. She'd be able to chomp through those. So I wouldn't want to put my finger in her mouth. It wouldn't feel good, but I would still have a finger afterwards. Do they have teeth? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> There are some crazy adaptations with turtles that have teeth like things in their mouths and throats. So for instance, if you want to look up one of those sea turtle species that I was talking about before, one of those seven turtle species, no. you'll find something crazy, which is a series of spikes in their throats that help them, for instance, when they swallow jellyfish, to swallow them and then have them not come back up. So while they're not teeth, they are pretty crazy adaptations that are kind of like teeth. Um, we had a question about these two. Do they get into squabbles? Do they get into squabbles? Well, Dottie is obviously slightly larger, so she likes to play games of tag that are sometimes slightly unfair. <laughs> that said, Tilly can dish it out as well, which is always kind of funny. So there's that. I wouldn't say squabbles too much as cold-blooded animals they don't necessarily have the excess energy to get into a lot of kerfuffles like that. Um, but Dottie can be a bit of a nudge. She sometimes uses her size to her advantage. I don't know if Tilly's just gazing, at, gazing her at her reflection, reflection or thinking about drinking. <laughs> um, Adriana was wondering what their predators are. That's a great question. These two species live in very different places, so let's start with Tilly since you're looking at her. She'll have the kinds of predators that live in this area that you might expect. So some of those larger mammals like 
foxes, weasels, coyotes, even the occasional wolf or things like that. She's also going to have to worry a lot about humans who might be driving their cars without paying too much attention or messing around and taking them out of their habitats. She's even small enough that she might at some point in her life have to worry about birds of prey or even larger reptiles that we have in the area. If you look over at Dottie, she's much larger and much harder to grab and eat. So an adult like Dottie would only really have to worry about humans and jaguars who could bite through that tough shell. As a younger turtle or an egg, she would certainly have to worry about other reptiles like snakes or crocodilians, and again, large birds of prey. So they do have to worry about different things, um, but they both have some predators, unfortunately. Luckily, those shells keep them pretty safe. Awesome. So I think we have run through all of our questions. Awesome. I hope that you guys enjoyed learning more about the differences between turtles and tortoises and meeting Dottie and Tilly today. Thank you, Sarah, for imparting your knowledge to us. <laughs> uh, we hope that you guys have a wonderful Memorial Day holiday. We hope to see you all at the zoo soon. Um, and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.